Welcome everyone to a Spaces with Blue Jay, and today we have Hubble Protocol, Two Ferry from Hubble Protocol, um, marketing manager, and he'll be sharing with us more on crypto borrowing and the stablecoin landscape in, in Solana. And yeah, as a fellow stablecoin protocol that's about to launch, we have much to learn from them. And I guess we would also like to share that we'll be doing our. We're currently about to launch in six days, and white listing is ongoing. So. Do check that out as well. Check out our website at bluejay.finance. And yeah, going back to Hubble, great to have you guys here. Thank you for your time this evening. And yeah, hope to learn a bit more about Hubble today. So I guess let's get started with the questions. How did, sir, how did you yourself get into crypto and what is Hubble Protocol? Yeah, thanks for having me. So... My my intro into the crypto space was a little stop start. So I initially came across crypto in 2017, right around the ICO boom. And my my first exchange that I used for those of you that's been in the space since the early days, relatively early days, you you might know Poloniex or Polonix. Traded a bit on on Polonix and did a few ICOs and. Then went quite a bit, and then in 20, 20, 2021, I started going into NFTs again and became a bit of an NFT DJ for a while, first on Ethereum and then with Solana through that, just um, looking for other opportunities and also the gas fees were looking insane towards the, the mid to end of 2021. And then I came across Hubble within the within the Solana ecosystem, and as they say, the rest is the rest is history. So I'll get into Hubble from this point. What Hubble essentially is, it's a stablecoin borrowing platform that enables you to deposit your crypto assets, a wide range of crypto assets, so Bitcoin, ETH, Sol, Serum, MSOL, Radium etc etc and then you can mint usdh against those assets and what this enables you to do is to retain exposure to the assets that you want to hold long term that you're bullish on while you have this usdh that you've minted and can use far and wide across the ecosystem so in in a nutshell that's what hubble is platform that allows you to hodl your assets but get liquidity out of it uh, at the same time lovely so yeah you get to yeah borrow against their stable coin yeah you said earlier that you can use the stable coin fine why if you don't mind going into that let's say for a retail user right now if i were to deposit my tokens in and receive usdh what can i, I guess what protocols can i with with usdh any use or yeah just yep. get into that yeah, naturally, there's one part of building a stablecoin uh, protocol is building the secure and uh, robust fundamentals behind the stablecoin. Uh, but then the other part is getting your stablecoin used across the ecosystem in establishing partnerships. So you want your stablecoin. We, as Hubble, want USDH everywhere and for people to be able to use it everywhere so there's a reason to want usdh and to to that point usdh is a quote token on orca and radium so it can be used on the two biggest dexes in solana we've got a usdh pool on solend which is the biggest lending protocol on solana we're on kramer finance uh, port finance another lending protocol uh, so there, there's a lot of a lot of yield earning opportunities that you can use USDH for. And the most recent one is Camino Finance, which is a automation protocol for concentrated liquidity. And USDH is the main asset on there. Uh, I think it's involved in seven or eight pools that you can deploy your USDH to to earn yield. Uh, and the Camino Finance team, uh, the Camino Finance protocol was actually incubated by Hubble as well. Yeah, lovely. So you covered Solan, Camino Pool, and you also did say that yeah, you can deposit a range of tokens to mint this USDH. I guess you can also share with us, I guess, what are the tokens which we can borrow against to get USDH besides Solan and Camino? Yeah. 
So a big part of the growth of Hubble as a protocol is naturally the onboarding more collateral assets and onboarding collateral assets that users already hold and want to hold. And we have the standard Bitcoin ETH Sol and then Solana ecosystem favorites like Serum and Radium and even FTT from FTX. And then we get into the actual yield bearing assets, which is essentially an, an asset that you can deposit into Hubble and that asset grows in value over time from yield. And then at the same time, you use your USDH. So for yield bearing assets, we have Sol from Marinade, SD Sol from Lido. We have Dow Sol, which is a, an NFT state Sol from MonkeyDAO. And then a bunch of Sol and C tokens. And the most recent one is actually K tokens from Camino Finance, which is a very powerful yield earning token that actually allows you to loop your USDH. Yeah, that's amazing. My U bearing tokens can earn you, and at the same time, I can borrow against and get USDH, and USDH can also earn you as right. Yeah, so there's multiple layers that you see adding up yeah. at, the, at the same time. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, on that, I mean, no, I guess let's go a bit more into the stablecoin itself. I guess what's backing the stablecoin is the deposits uh, that people are putting in the various tokens you mentioned. And yeah, I guess how do you manage that kind of mixed treasury and how do you maintain stability for the token? Yeah. The key thing to, to keep in mind about USDH is that it is fully over collateralized by crypto assets. And what that means is that for every one USDH that's in circulation in the, in the ecosystem, there is more than $1 of crypto that's deposited in Hubble. And what that means is that you can, if you have a loan on Hubble, and essentially every USDH on the market can be returned to Hubble and users can get the crypto assets back. Okay, so that's the very basic, that's what's at the core of Hubble. So it's secure by the fact that there's always more crypto and that avoids, the, yeah, that, that stays away from any algorithmic elements <clears throat> and the death spiral that's the worst nightmare of any stable coin. So that because of how Hubble's built, that's virtually, that literally impossible with the mechanics. So... Then we get to USDH peg and peg stability is naturally a very important part of, of any stable coin. And Hubble has over the past few months since our launch in January, we've implemented three main mechanisms that, that maintain the USDH peg together. So the one is the peg stability module, which is essentially a on-platform swap between USDH and USDC. And what that allows is for, uh, for frictionless arbitrage for in case USDH goes above or below PEG. So the PEG stability module is the mechanism that facilitates arbitrage. Then you have stability fees, which if you go to the Hubble app, you'll see stability fees. And stability fees are essentially a interest rate that is... Um, charged on user lo user debt or user loans and the interest rate that accumulates on user debt then leads to the third one which is a native yield so all of the interest rate that gets accumulated on user loans is then rewarded to usdh stakers on the protocol um, and interest rates can then be adjusted or the stability fees can be adjusted if it's higher, then USDH stakers earn more yield, which raises USDH demand. And then these three mechanisms work together to maintain a strong peg for USDH and give a native yield on the protocol, non, not but, but a yield in stablecoin PYs. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. So basically, it's actually paid for by someone. So you're saying there's an interest rate that's charged for those who borrow on Hubble. I guess, is there a specific percentage to this or does it range? So it varies from, uh, from vault to vault. But the absolute ideal for Hubble itself is to keep these interest rates as low as possible. 
and at the moment the interest rates are, uh, are I, I believe 1.25% is the highest interest rate and that is annually accruing so if you if you have a debt of 100 USDH a year later you'll have 101.25 so there's a dollar added to your debt than the year and um, the interest rates can differ between vaults as i said and a lot of the times this depends on uh, the risk the risk profile of the assets in the vault okay i understand and yeah i guess you guys also have been around for quite a while when did your stablecoin launch and throughout is i guess it's history how has it performed then? Let's say, I understand even during the Anchor protocol debacle, you guys actually did pretty well because of your liquidation ratios and the way that you guys have your pack stability module. Yeah, if you can elaborate on that as well. Yeah, I would just say that what we usually see is that Hubble users tend to borrow very responsibly because they are aware of the, the price movement that can occur with assets and the liquidations that can occur if price drops too much. So we launched in January 2022, end of January. And uh, since then, the USDH peg has been um, very stable. There's been, the, yeah, there, there's essentially not been a single DPEG. And the, after the implementation of the peg stability module and stability fees, the peg has tightened up even more to a point where we use the H trades uh, at a very tight range to the US dollar and USDC. We've been very happy with with how our peg stability mechanisms have have performed. And USDH as a stablecoin itself, as a non native stablecoin, has been doing very well. We're approaching, I think we might have passed now actually 800, 800 billion volume. No, sorry, 800 million, that is. So it's been very good so far. And there's a lot of factors that tie into that. Yeah, that's amazing and very much, much of an inspiration for us as well. And hopefully, you can emulate that when we launch. And yeah, I guess going on into more of your ecosystem and where Hubble can be used, how do you guys go about expanding your ecosystem partners? And do you guys have a specific sector in DeFi that you guys focus on when you guys carry out these partnerships? Mm. I wouldn't say that there's a specific sector that we target. The main thing that we want to accomplish is that we want to create value for users and that is users across the ecosystem and also users of other protocols for example onboarding assets like um, msol or state sol to hubble as collateral provides a use case for people that are already involved in the msol and stsol ecosystem and it, it gives it's a value add to those to those users so the value creation is very much at the center of it and that's essentially what we what we look at when establishing partnerships. You know, so for example, Dex partnerships with Radium and Orca. The goal of establishing those partnerships is to uh, to establish USDH liquidity, grow USDH liquidity, and by uh, by giving the opportunity for users to provide liquidity. That is a value add for them because then users can earn yields. So that it, it's always about what do users want and how can we uh, provide that to them? How can we build partnerships and grow the product so users can ultimately easily participate and benefit from doing so? Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, your point was on how, what users want more so than what sector of DeFi you guys are targeting. So on the point of not what your users want, I guess do you guys have a analysis or breakdown as to what type of users are using USDH? Be let's say how many is it more institutions or is it more retail? So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty healthy hybrid between the two. And that's the beauty of, of what Hubble enables is it enables larger players. We let's call them crypto whales, just as a very broad term. It enables whales to 
deposit their assets and rest easy that it's secure and then just borrow at a very safe LTV and use that to earn yields. And we see that with a lot of users, the the top wallets in the platform are, range from highest one has a deposit value of, I think, 12 or 13 million, and it goes down to million, or 800K, et cetera. And then we have the other part, which is just retail users. If you are holding Sol uh, or Bitcoin or ETH, a lot of just everyday people depositing the assets and using the borrowing USDH and using that USDH to, to earn yield. And that's why we're here, right? We're in DeFi to get access to financial services that that in, in traditional finance, we, we don't have access to. And whether you're a whale or someone just like dipping their toes in the waters, that's what we want to do. We want to participate in an open and accessible financial system. And Hubble has both both markets that it can cater to. Yeah, that's lovely to understand that's actually a mix and you're serving both target audiences fairly well. And yeah, I guess moving back to ecosystem partners, since it's currently more of a, you know, you're currently building up more partnerships in the DeFi space to earn you in various protocols, would there ever be a bit more focus on real world payments or more, more towards the, the real world side of things where let's say USDH can be used for day-to-day merchant payments or even cross-border remittances? I would say that long term, that would definitely be something that we would at the very least look at providing. And, and the big reason for that is that it's another use case, right? It's another DeFi use case. And the more we create, the more DeFi itself grows as well. So it's very possible to do that. Whether Hubble will 100% do that in future, uh, that hasn't been that hasn't been decided. But all the infrastructure for it to happen is already there. We have the platform that lets you access your liquidity via USDH. USDH is stable and Solana facilitates blazing fast payments. So all of the building blocks are there, um, but there's a lot of factors that goes into making that decision ultimately. I understand. And yeah, we actually did speak to Solana Pay as well prior. And yeah, I guess like what you mentioned, all the the infrastructure is all there. It's just a matter of getting out. So let's say building relationships with merchants and having the infrastructure on, let's say, a mobile platform. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I guess on that note also, currently, let's say for USDH, you, you mentioned there's a bunch of protocols that we can interact with. Which one of these do users use the most yeah, in terms of how they apply their USDH? I checked this yesterday. The platform with the most USDH liquidity at the moment, I believe, is Camino Finance, just because of the uh, the wide variety of use cases that USDH has at the moment, and the wide variety of pools that USDH can be deposited into, and because that facilitates automated liquidity and automated yield for USDH. So Camino Finance is is the biggest venue at the moment and USDH is primarily used by users to earn safe stable coin yields or more riskier users to earn more yields with more crypto exposure so for example USDH SOL pools or USDH Bitcoin pools uh, but the the vast majority of it is liquidity providers that that want to earn sustainable yields and grow their portfolio yeah, that, that makes sense. And yeah, I guess I, and I guess moving forward as well, how does Hubble intend to grow its market cap for USDH or is it through more partnership pipelines with various DeFi protocols to extend its use case? And yeah, what are your plans in the near term to the long term to build out the market cap? Yeah, so it usually comes down to, almost in almost every case, it comes down to providing use cases and that is done in a large way by establishing partnerships. So I'm going to keep banging the Camino drum. So you can just mute me if you're tired of hearing about it. But the goal of one, one of the very, uh, the very core parts of why Camino was 
incubated by Hubble is because variables uses to provide liquidity for USDH. And then this this Camino position is actually tokenized. So it's a USDH, USDC position. And that position is tokenized. And we accept that as collateral in Hubble protocol. And this enables you to then mint USDH again. And you can deposit your USDH back into the Camino pool. And then that position can be looped. And the picture becomes clearer. So there's more USDH on the market. Uh, and uh, it, it keeps growing and growing. And so there, there, there are some, some nuances to it. So for, for example, the deposit cap now is at 1 million K tokens. And this is, this is reached at the moment. And uh, we're very, very conservative in, in our approach to security. So there's, there are a few, a few parameters that we take into account before raising this, just to make sure that having more K tokens in Hubble wouldn't be too risky for USDH PEG. But the short and the long of it is Camino Finance is very powerful for growing USDH liquidity and and fueling the ecosystem. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, thanks for sharing more on Camino. And yeah, it's fine for you to share more on that. Yeah, definitely a good place for us to pack our money and earn more use as well. And yeah, I guess to I guess I'm down to my last few questions. So any of you in the crowd has any questions for Hubble or even for Blue Jay Finance, yeah, you guys can just request the speaker or just send a tweet over at the bottom right hand corner. And yeah, I guess on um, I guess since you guys have been around as a stablecoin for a fair bit, how's the stablecoin landscape in let's say Solana as a whole? And how do you guys intend to compete with let's say the other stablecoin protocols across the ecosystem? So the stablecoin ecosystem in Solana is actually, it's quite vibrant and it's growing and new projects like, for example, Blue Jay coming along. And that is exciting. It's not that Hubble feels feels threatened and Hubble has to be the only stablecoin in the Solana ecosystem. There are various use cases for different stablecoins and each protocol can have product market fit in in its, in its own way. For Hubble, our approach to differentiating, differentiating ourselves is by being extremely serious about the peg stability of USDH and the robustness of the protocol in terms of the safety of user funds as well. So we have various parameters that ensures user the safety of user funds, withdrawal caps and deposit caps. There's minting USDH outflows and inflows caps, etc. And then the the uh, pegging mechanisms that I mentioned earlier. So it is uh, very much at the center of what we, what we focus on to ensure that USDH is a safe and reliable protocol. And then there's the use case side, which essentially comes down to providing as many opportunities for users to earn yield with their USDH. And there's nothing that can replace hard work, and establishing partnerships for USDH integrations. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I guess we also really do appreciate that you guys are to a degree censorship resistant because you guys are backed by purely crypto assets versus let's say our bigger incumbents such as Circle and Tether where it's more of cash and cash equivalents or treasury bills where they are overly censorship. I guess censorship resistance isn't something which we really think about often but when let's say it comes to tornado cash situation recently where they had to blacklist some wallets yeah like it, it really comes to mind and it's really important so we are really glad that Hubble is providing that this type of stable coins in the market and you guys are ensuring stability through your various uh, mechanisms such as the pack stability module the stability fees and your liquidation ratios yeah I would just add that the the pick stability module as well as the k tokens which have k usdh usdc both of those uh, both of those assets or, or mechanisms contain uh, some usdc as well and we did not like we spend a lot of time thinking about okay is it worth having 10% of usdh or 15% of usdh 
backed by uh, USDC, if that means that the USDH peg is much more stable. And the that that was a trade off, right? So the trade off was, are we going to be, uh, are we going to go for full decentralization and per- perhaps risk not having a stable peg? And the decision ultimately came down to the the key thing, which is we need a stable coin with a very robust peg. So a part of USDH is issued against USDC, but we believe that is well worth it. And it's not like 80% of the stable coin at present. It's between 15 and 20 yeah, I think that's very fair. I wouldn't expect censorship resistance is important, but I don't expect any stablecoin to be purely backed by crypto assets because most of it is fairly volatile. And even let's say Dai, our the, the biggest one in terms of I guess decentralized stablecoin, actually a good percentage of its collateral is by USDC. So yeah, yeah definitely understand the trade offs and but yeah, really still appreciate you guys for being majority in crypto assets. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I guess down to my last few questions. Do you, will you guys be intending to also explore various currency denominations besides USD in down the road? Uh, that is something that uh, we have given a little bit of thought to. Uh, we haven't spent well, the. We don't stay up at night considering that. So at the moment, it's very much a focus on USD, and I think. That at the moment, the way things stand, non-USD stables, the yen or euro stable coins are quite a niche. It can be appealing, but the focus is very much USD. Yeah, and understandable. Yeah, most majority of people in crypto and actually in the real world currently do use USD. But yeah, I guess for BlueJ, what we're trying to do is bridge DeFi and crypto into more of other regions. Because as much as the 99% of the market cap in crypto, in, in stable coins are currently USD denominated, actually a huge percent of the world is, doesn't transact on a day-to-day basis on USD. So we are hoping to just bring crypto to those people and especially Southeast Asia to, yeah, I guess, let them experience the advantages of stable coins through, let's say, cheaper cross-border remittances. And yeah, hopefully... I think that's awesome, experience. yeah. I, I think that's awesome. And as, as I said a little bit earlier, it's it's very much a case of the, there's room for so many different types of stable coins and borrowing platforms. So I think it's really cool what Blue Jet is busy building. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. And yeah, I guess that's to a degree more or less the questions I have for today. I guess to end it off, just I guess more of your personal thoughts. Well, don't have to take this too seriously because... You probably can't project the future, but I guess in the near term to, I guess, one to three years, where do you see DeFi going with your, your position as, as a person building the ecosystem in Solana and as a stablecoin protocol? Yep. Uh, so I think that the the future of DeFi is bright. And uh, the one of the main things that, that will determine how bright it is will be regulation that is just it's an unavoidable topic sometimes it's painful to talk about it but regulation regulation that addresses DeFi can be incredibly beneficial to the space and open up loads of doors and in the long term allow for DeFi to be used by a much larger audience than it is right now and I think that DeFi as a accessible and yeah we can stick to accessible Uh, DeFi is an accessible financial ecosystem i think that is very valuable and i see it growing and the same goes for solana it can be pretty scary to to see from may to october 70 percent of the DeFi tvl disappearing and it just goes lower and lower but i I'm, I'm confident and Hubble as a protocol is confident in the fundamentals uh, that Solana has established. So I think the three-year vision and Hubble very much looks at the three to uh, three to five years and beyond. I think that is very bright and we are incredibly optimistic 
on this. And we look forward to seeing how regulation is going to impact the space and how, in the quote unquote, the next billion users are going to be onboarded uh, to DeFi. Yeah, definitely. And glad to hear that you guys are here for the long term as well. So I guess yeah, that's more or less the end of the, my questions. And I pinned the tweet for, I guess, everyone here to also take a look at USDH Harbor Protocol. There are some links in the tweet above. And yeah, you can check them out and join their community, learn how to access USDH in three steps real quick. And yeah, we also do have Galaxy Oats provided for this spaces as well. So if you guys can go over to the link in the next pin tweet that I just put up, you guys will be able to claim your oats just by attending the spaces and retweeting the, I guess, the tweet that I put out earlier regarding Hubble Protocol and our spaces. And yeah, it's fairly simple. Let's go ahead and get that. And for those of you who claim the oats, we will also do token white listing as we are launching in six days. And yeah, thanks, thanks again so much, David, for your time. And yeah, glad to learn a lot about, I guess, the Solano, Solana stablecoin landscape, more about USDH and what you guys are building in the space. And yeah, thanks, thanks for your time, yeah. sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I would just add, if you have any questions or just wondering about Hubble or USDH or Camino or Solana DeFi Lodge, you are free to dm me i would be very happy to discuss and answer any questions yeah man you're basically a wikipedia at this rate <laughs> you're basically answering <laughs> everything that's amazing <laughs> thanks a lot man yeah dude. cool man yeah listeners definitely appreciate that and yeah thanks for your time and for the rest of you good morning good afternoon and good night take care and yeah have a good one cool, cool. cheers guys cheers Bye.